Hey everybody, welcome back, it's Alex here. Today, I want to document some Xcode testing on the M1 Ultra, but specifically I'm gonna compare this to the M1 Max and the Intel Core i9 MacBook Pro. Now some of you might be new here, but these are actually my own personal machines from generation to generation. Between the M1 Max and the M1 Ultra, there hasn't been that much time, but at least this will give us a little bit of an idea of how things progressed. So today I'm doing three tests. Two of them are benchmarks. We're gonna do the Xcode benchmark, which I've always done on this channel. If you've seen my videos previously, I've done the Xcode benchmark on the M1 MacBook Air, Mac Mini, except for the M1 Ultra. I haven't done it on that yet, and that's what we'll do today. We'll also do a really huge Xcode build that's WebKit. For those of you that are not familiar, WebKit is an open source project and that's basically what Safari is based on. We're gonna actually build Safari and that's gonna take a little bit of time, but don't worry, you don't have to watch the whole thing. I will report the results and I'll take an average of a couple of different runs. And finally, I'm gonna build a real world project that my team and I are building for a client. We're gonna build that, we'll see how long it takes and we'll see whether I'm getting an improvement going from this machine to this machine to finally this machine and I have not done this yet. So this is going to be interesting to see if this whole transition that I'm doing to the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip is even worth it. And maybe this will help you out with your own decisions as well. All right, let's begin. If you haven't seen this before, here's Xcode Benchmark. It's open source, I'll link to it down below. And this is a, a nice little project. And the reason this is good for a benchmark is because it uses over 70 dependencies that it has to build. So it's pretty big. You can check out the repository if you wanna see which ones are included. And you can also go and compare all the results that uh, people have been submitting. Now, also pay attention to the fans. I got TG Pro running on all three of these machines. TG Pro is a little program that you can control the fans. It shows you the fan speed and shows you the temperature of each core. Check it out. So here is the fan speed and the sitting temperature of the Intel machine, spinning at around 1700 RPM, just sitting there not doing anything. 51 degrees. The M1 Max MacBook Pro. Fans are off on that one. It's uh, about 47 degrees. And finally, the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra. Fans are constantly on around 1300 RPM. And I honestly have not seen it go up above 1400 RPM with any of the tests that I've been doing so far, except for when I max out the fans manually. This one is the coolest at 37 degrees even though they're all sitting here in my room. Let's see if any of these tests affect the temperature on that Mac Studio because that thing is a little beast. Xcode benchmark, I'm gonna set it up and basically we just run this uh, little benchmark.sh file. Now it does report the time at the end, but because we like to have a little more fun than just reporting numbers on this channel, we're gonna use the Schwarzenegger to kick off the test at the same time. Just gotta line it up and let's go. <laughs> there we go, they're off to the races. So far, it looks like the M1 Max MacBook Pro is ahead of everybody. Well, we'll see how this ends. All right, it's been about, um, well, about a minute or so, and the Intel machine is at 100 degrees. It's really pegging that 100 degree mark. The fans are really spinning up over there. It's at 3100 RPM. You can really hear the fans now. MacBook Pro handling this thing like a champ. Fans are off, but we're up to 90 degrees now. I think they will turn on soon. And of course, Mac Studio, 1300 RPM, 47 degrees. Not breaking a sweat. By the way, for those that are wondering, this is multi-core test because the Xcode build does use up all the cores. Wait a minute. No, no way. Mac Studio is done? Are you kidding me? Okay. Well, um, that was pretty crazy. The Mac Studio already finished and that was 77 seconds. Very nice. And that is faster than the M1 Max MacBook Pro, as it should be. There are a lot more cores here doing the work. There's 20 cores total on the Mac Studio and there's 10 here. So 100 seconds on the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, which is not bad actually. So it's not like the M1 Ultra is actually two times faster than the M1 Max chip. And considering this is a laptop where you could run into some thermal throttling issues, this was pretty good. Okay. We got a result from our old Intel machine, and that one is a 189 seconds, so I will be saving myself a considerable amount of time here by going from this to this. Now, I will run this one more time just to make sure we get some kind of average going on here, and I will start it up immediately 
even though the Intel machine is still warm. That goes against the rules of the test, but I feel like it's a more realistic approach because you might be building several times in a row. We know what happens while we're programming, right? You build it, you make a mistake, and then you're like, oh crap, I gotta build it again. And then you gotta build it again. So that's what we're doing. Simulating the real world. All right, here we go. MacBook Pro with the M1 Max. Fans kicked up here now at 1500 RPM. So the second time around, after the machine was already warm, this is when the fans kicked up. And uh, M1 Ultra is done. 67 seconds. So the second run, we shaved off 10 seconds. This one's at 92 seconds. We shaved off 8 seconds on the second trial. And we're waiting for the Intel machine. Surprise, surprise. While we're waiting for the Intel machine, I did execute this test one more time on the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra, just to see if it, first of all, can catch up to the Intel machine and do two builds in one, uh, one of Intel's. And also, I wanted to see how much wattage it takes up to do the build. So right now we're looking at 59 to 60, ooh, 90 watts being used by the M1 Ultra. It's not a consistent 90 watts, but it's going from about 50 to 90. Notice the fans not budging. The temperature is a little bit warmer, but not significantly. We're still at 57 degrees over there, and the Intel machine is done. That took 185 seconds. And the uh, Mac Studio is done at 69 seconds, so we're getting pretty consistent numbers now. Moving on to the next test, which is WebKit. Here's the website for that. It's also on GitHub, and it's an open source project. You can go check it out. It's constantly being updated. You read about it here, how to clone it. You can clone it yourself and run it if you want to. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to uh, run a D debug build which is right here tools script build webkit debug and uh, here I'm gonna actually add a time command because I don't remember if it outputs the time at the end it probably does because it's an Xcode build but I'll use my own time command as well come over here Schwarzenegger and go I'll be back all right what's different about this test and why am I doing this well this is a really really huge build whereas the other one took about 60 seconds to do this one I'm expecting is gonna take many many minutes to do so I'll be back after it's done and tell you what the numbers are. All right, while that's building, we're about halfway, I'd say. Here is the Mac Studio. Look at that. <laughs> RPM, temperature, barely budging. Now the uh, MacBook Pro with the M1 Max. We are having quite a bit of a spin on there and hitting 100 Celsius. And then the Intel machine. Look at that RPM. That's crazy. We are getting up to 100 degrees. Uh, okay, well, you can still hear the noise, and yes, we still have the Intel machine building, but I just wanted to turn this on and tell you what happened. Okay, the uh, M1 Ultra Mac Studio finished in 10 minutes. I've never seen this thing built so quickly, this piece of code. 10 minutes and 30 seconds. Pretty good, pretty good. And it is a significant improvement over the M1 Max, and that one took 16 minutes and 13 seconds. So not a two times improvement, but a significantly large enough improvement to warrant uh, looking into this. If you're doing Xcode development, check it out. And I imagine this is gonna be the case for a lot of the multi-core kind of builds in software. Android, I haven't done that yet. I'll be doing that shortly, but that's probably gonna also show us some improvements. We'll see. And the Intel box finally finishes on the MacBook Pro with the Intel chip. 34 minutes and 53 seconds and yes i sat here the whole time watching it now you can still see that the fans are going pretty crazy at 5400 rpm it just finished the temperature is going down but that's what we're talking about so there's a huge huge difference here but if you've seen any of the previous videos i've been doing with these machines then you might have already expected something like that to happen just wanted to kind of uh reprove it to myself now this final test is going to be a client project that my team and i are working on and like i mentioned i have not yet compared it on all these machines so i'm really hoping that this will actually be an improvement as well now this is a native script application for those of you that are not familiar native script provides you a way to use javascript to cross compile for ios and for android so this is going to be an xcode compilation of the ios part of it okay and to set that up i'm going to use the time command and i'm going to say ns using the native script cli this time now i could open this up in xcode and build it in xcode or use xcode command line tools to build it but i'm going to use the native script cli because this actually represents my workflow and yes there's going to be a little bit of a step of building the javascript code as well but uh, that's all going to be included in this test so you'll get to see the whole thing all right time ns build ios he's back we're gonna do this one more time we're all set and let's go 
I don't know why we need them anymore because the build time is so different now. It's just doesn't make any sense. Plus, we're seeing the time printed out. I don't know, just for old time's sakes, you know? It's fun. <laughs> well, uh, uh, okay. Intel machine from Intel going to the M1 Max in the MacBook Pro variety. We've got going from two minutes and four seconds down to one minute and 22 seconds. Nice. From the MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip going to the Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip, we saved a total of one second according to the time command. Now, if you take a closer look at the build time, it says 35 seconds on the MacBook Pro. This is the build time according to Xcode, by the way not the time command. So 35 seconds and on the Mac Studio, 40 seconds, 40.9. So according to Xcode, it's actually taking longer on the M1 Ultra than here. How do we explain this? What's going on? Well, a couple things are going on. One is this is not only an Xcode build, as I've mentioned before, this is also including building some JavaScript. And also since I'm building this from a clean slate, there might be a download step going on. So I'm gonna run this one more time, but this time we're not gonna use a Schwarzenegger. We're gonna do this individually and I'm gonna clean the project and kick things off doing this one at a time. Now, while the Mac Studio is building, let me just mention that the single core tests were not that much different between these machines. If you saw my web app, tests that I've been doing here. You saw that the those are single core tests, by the way, and those have been very close. Building JavaScript using Node is also a single core operation. So in this whole build, we've got a single core operation going on as well as a multi core operation together to simulate not to simulate. This is a real example. So this is what happens when you have a project like this. All right, we've got the results 40 seconds again for the Mac Studio M1 Ultra and one minute and 22 seconds reported by the time command. Now, I'm wondering if I should reconsider uh, my decision here. I was gonna sell my MacBook Pro and keep the Mac Studio, but <laughs> I don't know. This is not giving me the warm and fuzzy feeling inside, let me tell you. Okay, folks, I'm bummed. This is uh, this is repeatable. We got 35 seconds again reported by Xcode on the MacBook Pro, one minute and 23 seconds. So this is a real project that I got to deal with now. And I've got this machine that I was planning to use. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of just, I'm just bummed about that. I was expecting to see some real gains in speed, but now I spent all this money and uh, oh well. Um, now you get to see the real world results. We did the benchmarks. The benchmarks looks the benchmark looks excellent, right? We've seen the benchmarks, but a real world project, maybe not necessarily so. Of course, it depends on your real world project. If you're building iOS apps, strictly iOS apps using Xcode, I think you'll be fine. In fact, you'll probably be really fine using the Ultra, but real world projects are often complex. There's lots of things involved. If you've got a back end, if you've got a front end, building everything together, you really have to look at the entire sequence of builds that you got to do, the entire collection of applications and what goes into the applications, libraries that you depend on, all that stuff plays into whether this machine is going to be good for you or not. And this goes for any machine, really. Mac Studio or not Mac Studio, whether it's an Intel machine, whether it's a PC or not, you really got to take these benchmarks with a grain of salt and test your own system for your own builds or find videos that closely resemble to what you're trying to build. So appreciate your suggestions for the different builds that I'm doing here. A lot of suggestions come from you, like the Intel machine that I've been using to build, doing builds on Linux as well. So if you wanna see more of that kind of stuff, consider subscribing to the channel. And if you found this video helpful, appreciate a like. Thanks a lot, folks. I'm bummed, but life goes on. I'll see you next time.